Hey, how y'all doing? Good. How am I doing? Oh, I'm great. I'm Ken. It don't get any better than that. You know, ever since Barbie left me, I got a lot of money to buy junk guitars. That's a fact. So, yeah, I'm doing good. So, hey, guys, time for a warning. I have my ask about my free surgical procedure shirt on, and you know what that means. Some of you long-time subscribers, like the ones that signed up last week, I appreciate y'all. Don't forget to subscribe and give me a like, thumbs up. Anyway, you all have figured out that I work on the west side of L.A. in an area that has a zip code that everybody in the whole El Mundo knows. And I got two decades in there, and I'll tell you what. There are a couple of streets that have full of surgeons that, I'll tell you what, they can make anything look good. Let's just say it that. So, you know, you'll be in a store over there, and you'll be behind somebody wearing some leopard skin, something or other. And you'll be thinking, why is this person selling alcohol to a teenager? And then the person will turn around and say, wow, Grandpa, I don't guess they could fix that part there. huh?" Anyway. Uh, I have been known to do some pretty Frankensteinish stuff on guitars, making repairs like this one. Got a big old surgery wound there, and uh, or if I if I didn't have to go to this extreme extreme arch top surgery, then I would just fix it up the best I could and grind it down spray a little chick flick teal on it and um, call it a day and that way everybody would know I'm the one I'm the one that messed it up that bad badge of honor well I've been spending time with Fred Wallachie up there in Malibu a little bit of time you um, have seen the episodes with Fred I'm gonna give you a playlist a minute with Fred you can see somebody really do this but um, what was I thinking? Oh, yeah, it's cold in California. It's wintertime out here. Uh, when I was in Malibu last time, people had two sweaters tied around their neck. Anyway, either my luthierism skills are getting better and I'm able to um, hide some stuff or I've been listening to Fred. I don't know which one it is. But we got this guitar right here. Y'all know is the 1950 silver tone we've been doing everything to this thing and there's a whole playlist up there somebody sent me a nice message the other day and said you have saved a ton of these guitars by telling people what they can do with them no not that fixing them up for very little money but we have an episode did I already tell you that I'm losing it playlist up there of everything we've done to this guitar but you can tell we got the clamps on it and we have fixed a bunch of cracks and sags and so what I, I guess I'm the 90210 of plastic surgeon of cheap arch tops anyway we're gonna get to the bench I'm gonna do a little short episode here to show you some fancy tricks that you can basically hide all these plastic surgery scars and make the guitar better and these are pretty simple things that you can do with about, I don't know, 72 cents worth of scrap apparatus. So let's go to the bench. I'm going to show you some tricks I stole off of Fred. All right, guys, we are in the workstation, and we need to take these clamps off, these spool clamps. Did I ever tell you that I made an episode about how to make those? Right up there, right about now. Anyway, we'll pull these off. If you remember right, we were gluing the, the block that holds the neck on back in place. Most of the back was gone. And we still got a little bit of work to do up here. Um, it never ends once you start moving things around. Something else gives or something like that. But... Um, I want to catch you up. We um, 
did some crack repair. There's a tone bar running down here on both sides. And, and those tone bars, instead of having bracing across this way, they run down the body of the guitar. And ideally, uh, on a fine-tuned instrument, they would scrape those down and kind of tune the guitar with the tone bars. Uh, travel side to be thicker or thinner or whatever, but they would uh, tune those uh, by scraping them in the factory, but who knows on something this cheap. So we did a lot of repair here, and then let me flip this over. I really like this stand here because you can get your guitar right where you need it. If I can ever do that here and tighten it up. But we did a lot of work right around here with hide glue. Now, we use hide glue because it heats up, it gives you better setting time, but we literally went from all the way over here to all the way over here because the whole back was off. And you had these cracks. So now we're at a point where we've got a couple little things to scrape off here. For the most part, hide glue cures pretty clear. So we want to scrape this down some, and then we've got some touch up here. So let me show you a couple little tricks. Okay, I think I got my camera situated properly here. You'll remember that right in here, there was a piece of uh, kerfing missing in here. So we got had a lot of stuff going on, cracks here, whatever. So we might be tempted to take a scraper and just come along here and get rid of everything. But in the world, according to Fred, you end up taking down wood that you don't need to. And so there might be a way to think about building this up. But the first thing we need to do is get rid of this excess glue. I could use a violin maker's knife and and all that or I could even use a file but again those are kind of destructive so let's take a look at you know what one of these are yeah no no -uh. no no well, I'm finally going to tell you what these are really for um, we can scrape a thin layer of hide glue here so let's no let's not do that I'll tell you a little trick. Do you know how thick this tape is? Yeah, that's right, about as thick as it is. What would we do if, say, we, for example, we wanted to scrape this up here, but we only wanted to scrape that part and we didn't want to touch the rest of it? Well, here's what we might do. We might take two pieces of this tape, like so. See that? And then we might figure out about how wide that is, and we might put those pieces of tape on this razor blade like this, leaving only a small area open like that. Now guess what? If I take this down the guitar, it's only going to scrape off the width of that, so we can scrape off right along that line and get rid of all of this glue without damaging what's around it. Same thing here. I can take this part here and it won't touch anything except the hide glue it's sticking out. Believe it or not, that little piece of tape, despite the motorcycle and owl noise in the background, will protect what we've got going on here. Isn't that amazing? And it won't mess up the finish on the rest of the wood. Easy money. Now, you can take and set up a number of these, and these things are magnetic, so you can get a little collection of them going here. And you might decide you want half of the razor blade sticking out, like so. Anyway, plus they'll bend a little bit, so that's a very easy way to get rid of this hide glue 
without damaging the rest of it. I think this is about the easiest one. Again, the whole idea is I am going to bring everything within the width or the thickness of the tape, all the glue residue down to there. And then it's easy to hide. Again, hide glue is a mist made out of hide. It doesn't mean you can hide it, but it kind of works out that way. So, get a pack of razor blades and some scotch tape, and you can save yourself a lot of not messing up any more finish than you need to. Now, I will tell you one thing about these things. Um, they're starting to sort trash now. Um, don't just throw these in your trash can and leave them loose like this. Um, get a disposable container that's for these things and um, be, be okay with them. Don't just throw them in the trash. People get cut. Safety first. Unlike the oil fill, which is where safety is last. Anyway, I'm going to do some more of this and get this taken down to show you my le next little stunt. Okay, we're getting closer. You can see I've got tape on half the blade. So when I'm coming into this area here, I'm just trying to get that right there. I'm trying to get this nice and smooth like so. A little bit on top. I just flip the blade around like so. Tape is hiding that. See that? A little bit of rough right there. But... The rest of the guitar is protected by that tape. Pretty handy. Now, you're saying, well, this looks a little rough, and it does. And so we'll move on to the next little trick. You want to remember that this part was split. The body has split all the way over to here. So, take your time with this. There's no rush. This guitar has been waiting 70 three years for you to do this, right? All right, and the next step in this very sophisticated process is this watercolor set that if you get a coupon from the right craft store, you will uh, get it for about $10. And if you use your head, you can act like you actually want to go to the craft store. Of course, you're after this, but you don't talk about that until you run across it. Anyway, you take some brown, you take a little black, and uh, maybe a little red, and maybe there's a happy tree right over here, right? Anyway, you kind of get to where you think you might be approaching the same color, and you take this, and you just... Go like that. Now you want to remember this stuff's going to change color just a little bit as it dries. So do a little part and then see if it's going to match. I got a feeling that's pretty good. It's not like I painted the Sistine Chapel or anything because, yeah, I'm just not that old, but you kind of get the hint here is pretty easy stuff. That's why I can do it. Completely and utterly disamazing. Easy money. I don't think we need to spend any more time on this. Just a little bit of water. 
a little bit of brown, a little bit of black, a tad bit of red. And you can just get about any color you want. That looks like it might need to be darkened up just a little bit. Like so. And then you just go along. Touch this up. Very purdy. All right, once that's done, you want to let it dry and kind of see how it's doing. If it's turning a little bit too browny here or whatever, you can mix in a tad bit of yellow and lighten that up just a tad. Come back and it'll dry up to the point where it's going to look pretty good. Then what you want to do is you want to let this dry completely for the next little step in the surgical procedure. Okay, I'm zoomed in on this area here because there are some high and low spots here. Again, this thing was all cattywampus. So um, you just get your little palette going on here, get the right colors and then watch it dry and you'll get it down. And then, I mean, if you're slick about it, you just kind of clean off your uh, paint uh, sat after everyone then you can kind of go okay on this guitar I'm going to need four brown a little bit of yellow and some red anyway now we're at this point so this is a part that Fred opened my eyes up to something um, there's some stuff called nitrous cellulose guitar lacquer and you can buy it and I will give you a link below I touched on this in a previous episode but this stuff, if you leave the lid off of it, it vapors off. You remember that we made some um, shellac, guitar shellac, out of eucalyptus keno. In fact, this almost matches this color perfectly. But um, the moral of the story is this is tree sap hardened up. Uh, like amber and then mixed four to one with Everclear. So that's how we made this. So again, anything that's a spirit varnish or lacquer is going to escape off or gas off into the atmosphere. The more of the liquid that gases off, the more of the lacquer that's left. And so this is available. I gave you a link below. You can get different... Uh, uh, tints of it clear uh, it ages well but now what we're going to do is this is starting to thick thicken up so we take a small brush and it really helps to have the guitar um, standing in an orientation where this flows so it would be up and down would be better but we just take this stuff and start putting it in where the offsets are where things are uneven and you're basically filling this up almost like Bondo on a car. Again, I'm just showing you this because it's easy with the camera. If I had this stood up and was coming down like so, it would just flow. Don't put on too much at once. Be patient and just build it up like this. 
until it's nice and smooth, then you can take some 1200 grit uh, or 1500 grit sandpaper and get it down to where it needs to be. So you're just basically using a thick lacquer to build up. Now, you'll notice that when I start putting lacquer on here, it deepens that color up a little bit. If this doesn't work right, sand it just a tad, scrape it just a bit, and then get your color right. And you'll find I'm a lot happier since Fred uh, showed me this. Again, if I stand the guitar up where I'm applying this and it's just running down, it'll, it'll flow right in kind of like caulking, but I think you get the idea. Um, it's very soothing. I didn't say that. Don't tell anybody. I've never used that word before in my life. But put it on layers, and the next thing you know, it will build up to the point where this will be nice and smooth. So I've got some more work uh, to do on this. I'm not going to bore you with that, but you kind of get it. Nitrocellulose lacquer. Left with the lid off a little bit to get thinner. will do the trick. Finally, when you got a little chip like we had up here, you get the color right and you just be patient and keep filling that. So when you start getting down to the end where everything you've painted and the lacquer starts to come together, you'll look almost as good as that leopard skin suited something or other over there in 90210, pardon all right, there we go. It was just that simple. Scotch tape. Pack of razor blades. Kids watercolor set. Maybe teenage watercolor set. And some nitrous cellulose guitar lacquer that's been let to gas off a little bit. It's really that simple. So the big lesson takeaway here was I think a lot of us, when we have to line up a top that's been cracked or something, we've already figured out the yin and yang balance and stuff I've been explaining to you about wood, wherever there's this, there's this. If something's out of whack here and you fix it, something's going to be out of whack over here. So all these twisty, bendy, cracked, sunken guitars, when you glue the back on, they're never going to line up. And it used to be the old days, I would take and sand down or carve down or scrape down instead of building up. So that was the lesson I took away. So, um, yeah, and I'll close out with this. Don't be rushing out and buying these up because I don't get any of the money. Um, you know, I had to move on to something more successful than this. I mean, what are you going to do? I'm not going to be labeled as one of them child actors that's uh, stereotyped in casting. You all know what I mean. So I'm here for you, Pugnas. Anyway. Give me <laughs> Isn't that the most ridiculous thing you've ever heard? No, it's not. I got better stuff next time. Anyway, give me a like and a subscribe, and I'm sure glad you all got to see me today.